Hey crafters, my name is Rabia and I'm the London Craft Girl. In this video, I'm going to show you how to create this knockout effect in Inkscape. Now the methods that we will cover in this tutorial are most commonly used to create this kind of look where you have two layers of text, one knocked out of the other. But actually there are loads of different ways of applying these same techniques. For example, you can use it to create a stencil. Say you wanted to cut this on your Cricut machine with mylar and then you could use it to paint tiles. Also, if you're creating a layered card, for example, you can use this same method to cut shapes out of the top layer of card and then you would put another layer of card underneath. And another example is if you wanted to create this sort of a layered project. These different applications use the same methods. So in this tutorial, I'm going to specifically cover how to create this knockout effect with text. If you want me to cover how I did the three examples below, let me know in the comments and I can do another tutorial specifically on that for you. So let's get started with creating this knockout effect. For this technique, we'll basically be following three steps. The first step is to turn all of our layers into paths. The second is to add a shadow around the top layer. And the third step is to slice that shadow layer out of that bottom text layer. And when we've done all of that, we will end up with something looking like this on the screen. So let's first of all create our layers. On the left hand side, find the text icon and select on the screen. And we'll start with the layer that says Inkscape. I'm going to use a more bold font for this because a knockout effect works better with the bottom layer being a bold font. So I quite like this one called Fashion Fetish. This is uh, from Creative Fabrica and I will link it for you in the description below. And then we'll get a second text layer and type this knockout. Oh, hang on, I don't want that to be capitals. I'll do that again. Knockout. And for this, I'll use a more cursive font. So Scott Pilgrim, another one from Creative Fabrica is a good one for that. So what you want to do is, as I said, we first have to convert everything to paths. So you select on your object and you come up to the top, hit path, object to path. Now with a text layer, you always then have to do object on group. And now you can see there are little dash boxes around each individual letter. We then have to go path and union. So those are three sub steps to always remember whenever you're turning text into path. So I'll demonstrate that again. We'll do path, object to path, but then we have to do object on group, path, union. So first of all, I'm going to change the colors. So here you can see fill at the bottom. If you click on that, and here I'm just selecting the bold, this box here, that means there'll just be one solid color. I'm going to use the ink dropper tool to pick up this gray color. And there you go, that's changed that color. Then I'm going to select my knockout and again, double click here and select the solid color. And I will do the ink dropper onto this pink color. So if I double click on the word now, you'll see these gray little boxes appear. These are called nodes. I have a video explaining what nodes are and how they work in conjunction with your Cricut machine. So I will link that for you below. You can check that out to understand this a bit better. And this is what an object looks like when it's been converted to a path. So it's the same thing here. All those little gray squares are the nodes. So it's no longer a text object. To resize this, I'm going to turn the lock icon on. That will keep its aspect ratio. With text, you don't want to be messing around with aspect ratios. And I'll just drag the corner and make it approximately the same size as the one above. And I'll do the same with the knockout. Just drag. So if I layer one on top of the other, like this, one thing to know is if you've got this little button turned on, this is like a snapping function. It will mean that as you move things around, those gray boxes that I showed you earlier, these ones, they will snap to the nearest um, other gray box that's around. So if you want to be able to move your objects around freely, then turn that off. And I'm going to turn it off because I want to place the two, two layers by eye. 
rather than um, using the kind of snapping function. It's the same as like the smart grids that you get in the Design Space app version, not the desktop version. I might move it across a little bit more, somewhere like there. So that looks good, but of course, if we were to do the equivalent of slice now, we wouldn't have this nice white border around this top layer saying knockout. Without it, it just, it wouldn't look very good. So we're gonna first create that. I've covered this in another tutorial, um, specifically on adding a border around text. If you want a more detailed explanation of this, I will link that in the description below as well. But in essence, what you do is you click on path and linked offset. And then there's that little diamond. You just click and drag the diamond. I don't wanna make it too big. But let's zoom in a bit by pressing plus on the keyboard. And that gives me a bit more control. So maybe something like that. So that's created a separate shadow. I can move that. So yeah, I've actually got the text there. I've moved that out of the way. And now, if I highlight over both of these text layers, and then we have to do path and where is the difference? So you see it has taken the top layer and sliced it out of the bottom. So difference is kind of the equivalent of doing a slice in design space. So I'm gonna hit plus on my keyboard again to zoom in a bit more. And then I'm going to reposition this to try and get it exactly in the middle of that shadow bubble we made. So that's it guys, that's all you need to do to create this kind of a knockout effect in Inkscape. As a reminder, there were three steps. We turned our layers into paths. We created a shadow layer around the top layer, and then we sliced that top layer out of the bottom using the difference function. So all you would do now is save this file. I'm going to save as, let's call it Inkscape Knockout. And you can save it as a plain SVG, save. I would then just open this in Design Space. So let me just demonstrate that for you. So here we are in Design Space. I'm going to come to Upload, Upload Image, Browse. What's this one? Open. Sometimes you get this warning sign saying that there are unsupported elements. Usually that's because there's like a shadow ghost text box in your original file. Maybe you pressed on the canvas with the text icon, but you didn't actually write anything. I usually ignore it and click continue and things tend to work. But if you do have trouble when you do that, let me know and I can put together a quick video to explain how to fix that. So I'm going to upload this, insert. So it's actually brought in those other layers that I had shown you. I'm going to ungroup. We can just get rid of these other ones and then ungroup this again. And there we go. You've got this layer you'll cut out as one mat and then this second one as a second mat in a different color. So if anything about this tutorial has been a little bit confusing for you, check out this playlist that I will put on the screen for you. It's all of my beginner Inkscape tutorial videos. Hopefully any questions that you have are answered in those videos. And if not, just definitely drop me a comment below and I will get back to you. And if you have any other requests on stuff you want to learn on Inkscape, just let me know and I will try and help you out. I hope this video was helpful and easy to follow. I'll see you in the next one. And until then, happy crafting.